Hello, and welcome back to County Perspective, the show that focuses on Frederick County government, local programs and events, and the community that you live in. I'm your host, Brandon Rosa, and thank you for joining us. The past few weeks have been busy over in Winchester Hall, so let's find out what our county government has been up to with some recent news. County Executive Jan Gardner shared some good news during her public information briefing on Thursday, January 30th that she will be moving an initiative forward to accelerate agriculture preservation efforts in Frederick County. The proposed legislation will increase the county's investment to save valuable farmland in an effort to achieve the long-standing goal of preserving 100,000 acres of agricultural land. This is key to ensuring the long-term economic viability of agriculture, which is important because Frederick County is a leader in agriculture for Maryland. Frederick is home to 1,300 farms and more than 180,000 acres of farmland. Currently, the number of farmers who want to preserve their land through one of the county's agricultural preservation programs far exceeds the money available. The proposed legislation would add $1 to the county's recordation tax, which is a one-time charge paid on certain real estate transactions. This will generate an estimated $6.8 million. The first $500,000 would be set aside annually for three related purposes, economic development grants to support agriculture diversification, grants for rural historic preservation, and first-time homebuyer assistance. All remaining funds will support the county's agriculture preservation programs. Agriculture is one of our oldest industries in Frederick County, and it's a, certainly a major part of our rich history. One of my priorities is to ensure that we leave a legacy of agriculture for future generations. And that means that we must preserve our best, most productive farms, and at the same time help to keep agriculture an economically viable industry. Agriculture directly accounts for more than 150 million in sales each year in Frederick County. The industry generates an economic impact of nearly $1.5 billion, and that's billion with a B. Why is the state of agriculture so important? The economy and success of our small towns and our rural villages really depend on having a thriving agricultural industry. The legislation will be introduced to the County Council on Executive Gardner's behalf by Council Vice President Michael Blue and Council Member Jerry Donald. You can find the draft legislation online at frederickcountymd.gov executive. In January, County Executive Jan Gardner announced that the Kroger Company will be moving to Frederick, bringing over 400 jobs to our area. Kroger Company is the nation's largest grocery retailer who will be partnering up with the Okado Group, the world's largest grocery retailer, which will provide and maintain the digital and robotic equipment used at the facility. This customer fulfillment center will provide groceries to citizens of Frederick County and across the region in a fast and easy manner. Here is a message from Executive Gardner for more details. Today, I'm very excited to announce that the Kroger companies, along with their partner, Ocado, will construct a new high-tech fulfillment center right here in Frederick County. Kroger is the world's largest online grocery retailer. I'm thrilled that Kroger and Ocado will bring to life a currently vacant facility, will add up to 500 new jobs, and invest tens of millions of dollars in our community to develop a new 350,000 square foot robotics customer fulfillment center. Join me to welcome Kroger and Ocado to our growing e-commerce business community. Frederick County is a great place to do business, and this is a good day for Frederick County. The new Customer Fulfillment Center will be constructed at the previous Toys R Us facility on Jeffrey Way. Community members and staff from Frederick County Fire and Rescue Services gathered in Winchester Hall on Thursday, January 30 for the DFRS 2020 Promotional Ceremony. 18 firefighters were recognized for receiving promotions over the last year. Staff members from DFRS who were recognized went above and beyond while performing exemplary fire and rescue services on and off the field. Six staff members were promoted to the rank of technician, 10 staff members were promoted to the rank of lieutenant, and two staff members were promoted to the rank of captain. With the promotions, staff will see a change in duties and an increase in responsibility. 
Frederick County's future of public safety is growing each day, making Frederick County a safe place to live. Congratulations, DFRS staff, on your promotions. Did you know that February 4th was Frederick Day in Annapolis? Frederick City and county officials had the opportunity to visit state officials to share about all the great things happening in our community. Here's a look back at what happened that day. Frederick Day in Annapolis allows us to promote and sell Frederick to our state legislature, to our members of the House of Delegates and the Senate, and really to share what the, all the good news about what's happening in Frederick County. The City of Frederick has held this event for a number of years, and today for the first time we have a joint Frederick County, Frederick City event. And I think it's really important to send a, a broader and bigger message about our community, our partnership together, and the great and unique collaboration that we have uh, in Frederick County. Um, we're here, obviously, to uh, promote some of our big projects and to seek capital funding for them, both this year and as well as into the future. Um, but again, it's really to share about news about our thriving community. I think it's important for our state delegates and senators to see, one, the collaboration that's in work in Frederick, the partnerships between the public sector, the private sector, and the nonprofit sector, uh, to be able to come down here and to bring a little bit of what's happening in Frederick into Annapolis. I think it's a really important exposure and it reminds our state representatives of what we already know, that great things are happening in Frederick and we're looking for the state to be a part of that and to support that. It's important that there is a Frederick Day because there's so many things that are happening and you do this annually during the General Assembly time. And I've noticed over the years, there's been a whole lot of changes uh, for the better. And it gives an opportunity for the rest of the state to know what is happening in Frederick County, um, both uh, business-wise business and in the community. And it's a big deal for our state. You're, you're fast growing, and um, it's just great to see the changes from year to year that are being made and improvements for the quality of life for the residents of city and the visitors to, city, to Frederick. This is a fantastic event for legislators to come and meet the people in Frederick. And not just Frederick City, but Frederick County, the whole environs. You have some employers, some economic opportunity, uh, you know, programs going on here. And I think it's to allow people to see what's going on, meet people, and I know legislators look forward to it. The other aspect is having it at lunch in the middle of the day. People are very busy, they can make it very brief, and there are usually many, many requests for, on people's social calendars for the nighttime uh, aspect. But I think this is very wise for Frederick City and Frederick County to do. And again, you know, so that, so that legislators can see people and see what's going on. Our main accomplishment is to make people aware of all the good things happening in Frederick County and to really promote our request for capital funding to support some of our major infrastructure projects, including the Lake Linganore dredging project, um, the expansion of our public safety training facility, and the importance of agriculture and our need to advance a cooperative or some kind of collaborative to support a viable agricultural industry into the future. We want our lawmakers to walk out of this opportunity saying, we want to support the things that are happening in the city of Frederick and in Frederick County because it's good for the state of Maryland. Be sure to stick around. We have plenty more coming up on County Perspective. Welcome back to County Perspective. I'm your host, Brandon Rosen. Now in a bit, we'll head to the kitchen and learn what delicious treat the Frederick Senior Services Division is serving up. But first, let's find out who this episode's featured pet is.
Bobo is a recent addition to FCAC and is currently our oldest resident. This handsome domestic long hair is 14 years old and in need of a loving retirement home. Staff are already head over heels for this charmer, and according to the previous owner, he is a friendly lap cat who still enjoys a good play session. Visit Bobo at Frederick County Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center, 1832 Rosemont Avenue. It's time to satisfy your hunger and treat yourself to a new dish that you can easily make in your own home. Once again, the Frederick County Senior Services Division has teamed up with FCG TV to share a new recipe that can be prepared by anyone, including our senior viewers. Bring your appetites, we're about to see what's on the menu. Hi, do you like oatmeal for breakfast or maybe supper? If you do, this is a great recipe that you might want to try. The great thing about this is it has carrots in it, so it's healthy, adds a little fruit and vegetable nutrition to it, but it also is sweeter than most oatmeals, and it, it almost tastes like carrot cake. We're going to start by making carrot milk. That is one cup of milk in a blender, and we're just going to measure in this measuring cup I like these measuring cups because you can look down on them and the measurements are on the inside. So you don't have to hold it up or get down on the floor to, to figure out if you've got enough milk in there. To that milk, we're going to add one can of sliced carrots. We're going to put the lid on, and I strongly advise put the lid on um, so you don't have carrots all over the kitchen. It's going to get a little noisy, but we're going to puree that mixture. Isn't that a terrific color? It just looks warm and, and sunny. This is a great recipe to make if you're any time of the year. We're going to make it in the jar. We're going to add to this jar a cup of oats. I'm using old-fashioned oats. You could use steel cut. I don't recommend using oats that have been ground very fine because you're going to lose the texture and it's going to taste kind of soupy. To this, we're going to add about a tablespoon of brown sugar. This is to taste. Um, if you like things a little sweeter, you might add a little more or you could leave it out. But I recommend just a little bit because it does give a, a little bit of a flavor. We're going to add a half cup of raisins. You could use dried cranberries, dried blueberries, or other dried fruits. We're going to add about a teaspoon of cinnamon to this jar. Again, that's to taste. And you might like a different uh, seasoning. Perhaps uh, pumpkin pie spice might be good in there, or to use some nutmeg. And finally, just to beef this up a little bit and make it um, so add some hidden nutrition. I'm going to add a couple tablespoons of protein powder. If you're a caregiver, this can be a great way to get some additional nutrients into your, your loved one's diet without the, uh, a different taste. You're not going to taste that protein powder at all. We're going to just stir this together a little bit to get those blended. So oats is a terrific source of fiber. It helps regulate blood pressure. It helps um, recommend it often for individuals with diabetes because it can help regulate blood sugar as well. So you want to include this in your diet. Now we're going to pour our carrot milk in on top of those oats. Just going to get all that in there. And again, you see that beautiful color. So it has all the flavors of carrot cake with lots more nutrition than, than carrot cake. I was kind of skeptical when I first saw this recipe because was I like carrot cake and I was not sure that this was really going to be what it was, it was saying it was going to do. Put the lid on. I'm just going to seal that up. This goes in the fridge overnight, um, at least eight hours. 
I like to make this up the night before, maybe when I'm cleaning up from, from supper, make this, put it in the fridge. And then the next morning, when it's kind of hectic at our house and we're trying to, to get out the door, we can simply pull out our jar of overnight carrot cake oatmeal. I'll give you a chance to look at this. It's, this is still pretty soupy, as you can see, it, it moves a lot. But overnight, it has the oats have absorbed the milk. Um, the raisins have plumped up a little bit. And we can just dish out a serving to go. This is good cold. You can eat it just the way it is. In the summer, that's a great breakfast. Um, if you like your oatmeal warm, you could just pop that in the microwave for a couple minutes and it will warm up. I like packing it once I've made it in packing it into some smaller jars, individual servings. Again, if you're a caregiver, this is a great way to make this up ahead. And then when your loved one is ready for a, a meal, all you need to do is pull the jar out. If you're using canning jars like this, take the lid off, you can microwave right in the jar. Or you can eat it cold. With a lid on, it's ready to go. And it's not only easy to make, but it's easy to eat and take. If you'd like a copy of the recipe for overnight carrot cake oatmeal, please go to frederickcountymd.gov slash senior services. Looking for something to do in the next few weeks? Well, Frederick County has your back. Check out some of the great programs and events that some of the county departments are offering. To find more events and programs, or for more information, log on to the county's webpage, frederickcountymd.gov. Now at the end of our show, we like to mention a few recent events, along with things our viewers should keep an eye out for in the upcoming weeks. The eighth season of the Frederick Speaker Series returns to the Weinberg Center for the Arts. Frederick County Public Libraries are a proud sponsor of this annual series. Participants get the chance to engage in an enlightening discourse with meaningful topics. The next speaker will be Dr. Mae Jemison on February 20th, starting at 7.30. Dr. Jemison was the first woman of color to launch into orbit aboard the NASA Space Shuttle Endeavor. Dr. Jemison will cover a variety of topics related to general motivation to science literacy and technological and medical innovations. Each story she tells has a sense of humor to keep the audience entertained and attuned. Two more speakers will be coming up to the Weinberg Center in the upcoming months. For more information and to purchase your tickets, visit weinbergcenter.org. February is American Heart Month, so before we go, the health department wanted to share this important message. Heart disease, which includes coronary heart disease, hypertension, and stroke, remains the number one cause of death in the U.S. And it's not just a concern for older adults. Heart disease is now occurring more often among younger adults as well. Common heart attack signs and symptoms include pressure, tightness, pain, or a squeezing or aching sensation in your chest or arms that may spread to your neck, jaw, or back. Nausea, indigestion, heartburn, or abdominal pain. Shortness of breath, cold sweats, fatigue, and lightheadedness or sudden dizziness. For signs of stroke, remember the acronym FAST. F is for face drooping. A is for arm weakness. S is for speech difficulty. 
and T is for time. If a person shows any of these signs, it's critical to call 911 immediately. Remember, heart disease is largely preventable. Visit the CDC's heart disease website to learn what you can do now to keep your heart going strong. That's it for this episode of County Perspective, but don't forget to follow Frederick County on social media in order to keep up to date on important news and events. We'll see you next time for a fresh look from a county perspective. Thank you.